speaker earlier. Therefore, I still like to open this floor for question and answer if there is any. Uh, I, I'm sorry that I don't think the Arto is here to answer directly, but as he have indicated, if you can file that question on the chat room, then we'll probably uh, reach out to him and probably find the answer. And the other people will also benefit from that question. Yeah, uh, our colleague Christine has put uh, email for Arto in the chat room and that's the, where his question will be directed to. Ram, if I, if I can make a, a, a comment, uh, I suppose uh, in, in I, I think it was Terence's presentation where uh, Dilip was asking whether he thought that uh, information is, is more fundamental than, than matter. If I can make a comment on that, I, I know certainly information is physical and, and, and the bit is, and, and some scientists have argued that the bit is actually the irreducible kernel in the universe and it's actually even more fundamental than matter itself. For example, to produce motion uh, or change requires energy, whereas to actually direct this change, you need, you need information. So one can, can argue that information is even more fundamental than, than matter and energy itself. If, if you look at it from that point of view, that's just a comment. Though obviously it's, it's, uh, it's open to debate, but uh, certainly it's something to think about. That's really yeah. great. And I had a brief comment to that. And that is that of course, um, there are at, you know, as many definitions of information as you could imagine. Um, Certainly, uh, information in the sense used by the it for bit, I mean, it's from bit group, um, is referring to information that has no reference, has no significance, has no function. When we use the term information in our colloquial talk or in biology, for example, we're talking about something that represents something for something that has some use. Um, yes. That certainly would not be the use of the concept of, of bit. Uh, by physicists, by Jaynes, for example, others who have uh, used that concept. Um, so I, I think the point is that there is a sense of information, uh, and I like to equate it with the concept of constraint um, or, or symmetry breaking relationship uh, that is universal in physics, um, and it's relevant to information theory as well. But it's but it's not sufficient to talk about. Uh, the information in our exchange, for example. Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. That's so my interest was in fact to go at the biological concept of information. That's really great. And thank you for bringing, Wasim bringing that up. Um, that reminded me of uh, uh, this, when we started thinking about the thermodynamics too, we consider there could be a three thread one based on energy, the second one based upon uh, entropy, and the third one based upon uh, information. And it was initially like that on our website, but I'm just sharing you kind of making of thermodynamics 2.0. One of our board of directors strictly objected that to that concept, but we didn't talk about what kind of information he was referring to, but he said that he was referring to the Shannon type of information. Mm -hmm. And I had so much respect with him. Uh, I'm sure he's listening now. So uh, he even emailed me that if information is on the thermodynamics too, he will not be helping me on this organizing this conference. Therefore we dropped that out and he's listening now and I, he might comment on that, but that's really uh, great. We brought that up and thank you so much, Wasim. And that reminded me of that making of thermodynamics too. I thought I'll just say you. There's you some are. very interesting problems surrounding, you know, information, thermodynamics, entropy, energy, and their interrelationship. There's no question that, that there's a lot of open and very interesting problems there. That's really. I'll make a few comments if, uh... On the topic, if people if people want to hear, uh, as most people probably, Gerald uh, Nayam knows, Terrence Deacon knows that I don't uh, the, uh, the the association of the equivalence of entropy and information is a fool's gold, as far as I'm concerned, 
and uh, as far as about at least a dozen other, uh, two or three, uh, uh, if you're a solid physicist or a thermodynamicist, you know that, uh, for example, when uh, uh, the famous Mendelbrot, when famously said that everybody knows Shannon's derivation is an error. And that's just mm -hmm. common, it's common, common uh, it's not, a lot of people like to think of it as a quick, a quick way to get into thermodynamics. And if you look at the journal uh, Entropy, it's, it's become a, basically a mess of uh, confused ideas about mixing uh, Prigozhin entropy, Shannon entropy, uh, Boltzmann entropy, Gibbs entropy, and it's produced more confusion than uh, is needed. So I told Ram, if he's going to do a thermodynamics conference, because thermodynamics textbooks are not based on bits. It's not, bits is, a bit is not a fundamental, it's not an SI unit. So the, confer, the, the conference uh, needs to be uh, based on SI units, energy, volume, temperature, pressure, which are the basic, uh, basic language of thermodynamics. And if you introduce thermodynamics or if you introduce information uh, into the, as, a fun, as trying to sell it as a fundamental unit in thermodynamics, you're going to, the whole, confirmation, the whole conference would turn into just a big mess within the course of 10 years. I'm glad to add something. Along the too. same lines, if I may comment, uh, I think it's really important to distinguish between thermodynamic entropy, where in every physical situation, its meaning is very clear. And informational entropy, you know, for good or bad, the word entropy was stuck to uh, information theory. I think... Uh, von Neumann was responsible for this. Yes. Uh, Shannon was asking for a word uh, to describe this information that he was talking about and PI log PI. And von Neumann apparently told him, well, call it entropy, nobody understands it anyway. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I think uh, one of the things that for my own uh, clarity, if there is a concept of temperature, that's physical entropy. If somebody is talking about entropy of DNA or this or that, uh, I said, what temperature are you talking about? Or entropy of words in a book or message. There's no concept of temperature. Thermodynamic entropy always has a concept of uh, temperature. I have, I have to say something here now uh, yeah. because I have this problem every time I talk to physicists and I talk about entropy and they say, where is your coupling parameter? There's no coupling parameter. Our problem, our problem is that Right now, we're probably still in the embryonic stages of understanding what thermodynamics is and even what information theory is. And we're using interchangeably terms that are finally different from each other. In fact, if we are talking about Boltzmann entropy, Gibbs energy, Shannon entropy, and whoever's entropy, and we do not know what they mean, we're already set up for confusion. In fact, James has a whole paper where he goes about this, if we don't know what we mean by entropy, we cannot talk about paradoxes. I mean, a paradox is, for the most time, a paradox is an ill-defined problem that you know, confuses the, uh, the solution. So you talk about uh, temperature. In my, view of, in my view of entropy, entropy, I take Shannon's uh, of view. I don't know what you want to call it. We can call it Shannon's entropy. We can call it H. It's not thermodynamic entropy, and it's equal to thermodynamic entropy under certain conditions. So Shannon's age applies to any distribution, any distribution. You flip a coin, it has an entropy. Uh, you choose your tie tomorrow with some probability, it has an entropy. This is not what the physicist would measure in the lab. That's a great comment. I, I, can, I, can I say something just quickly? I mean, I, I, I wonder if the connection here isn't that information is just not amorphous. It needs to have a medium in order to be stored, communicated, and otherwise transferred. And so if you look at it in that sort of a context, temperature then becomes relevant because the medium itself is temperature stable or instable. And this is the, the connection, I think, between temperature and the bit of information that can flip very quickly or effectively be dissipated depending on the temperature of the medium. So I, I think there may be a connection here that we're missing. 
Yeah. Me, I, I, if, I can, sorry. if I can say a few words, it's not so much information that stands by itself. If you look at there's a, there's a common thread and the theme, if you will, between uh, what I think of thermodynamic entropy, Shannon entropy, and something that arises in controls or feedback systems, and that's the Bode integrals. And they're all fundamental uh, limits of performance. Basically, the Shannon, the, the thermodynamic entropy tells you something about the fundamental limits of performance of a heat engine, whereas the Bode integrals coupled with the Shannon entropy, which is basically information or measurements that you use in feedback systems, tells you how much performance you're able to get out of a feedback system, a closed loop system. So the underlying thread here is actually limits of performance. Right. So there is a connection there. Because all of this is based on a variational principle. We're maximizing something. What it is we're maximizing. In yeah. my view, we're maximizing the probability distribution, the probability of the probability distribution. If things could happen with this probability or that probability, where a maximization is by definition uh, a, a variational problem. It sets, it, uh, it, it sets a limit. Talking back to temperature, to me, temperature is, has a very simple meaning independently of molecules. It has to do with the choosiness. If you have and microstates at infinite temperature, they're equally probable. That's what statistical mechanics says. Temperature is infinite, all of those are equally probable. And as you decrease temperature, you become more choosy. You choose the lower energy with higher and higher probability. And at zero temperature, you only pick the lowest energy. So temperature is nothing else but choosiness. In physics, it's coupled it arises from, from intermolecular forces. But when I choose my necktie, it has to do with, if I'm in a hurry to get something, I, it's infinite temperature, I will pick the first tie and run out of the house. Yeah. If it's important for me to look really good because I'm talking to a conference. Like That's that. really great. I just want to point out just one, one, one comment. When people actually measure temperature, all this probability stuff doesn't even come into play. We just stick a thermometer and measure temperature, <laughs> and they give interpretations. And I want to point out that the con when the concept of entropy was formulated, it is entirely macroscopic. And you don't need any of these macroscopic things. Statistic mechanics is very useful for deriving equations of state, but you can do all the thermodynamics without ever talking about statistical mechanics. That yes. is why Einstein pointed out that it is an independent subject with, two, can... with all the co conclusions coming from two, to the two laws. So yeah, I think uh, that's a great uh, ending with what the delivery. I think that's a great uh, time to end this conference uh, today.